Hello, we are in the middle of day one of the AFS meeting and you just reported that um, search dogs looking for recently deceased people just had a percentage of 30% of uh, correct positives. What does that mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're looking at a very specific question. So we're not looking at cadaver dogs. We're looking at dogs um, that are being used for court now that are looking for something called residual odor. And so this is odor from a cadaver when there's no biological material there. So like in a car, in the trunk of a car, right. or the seat of a car. So a car, uh, 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 someone is killed, the body is carried, they're laid down on the couch, uh, and a few hours later they're taken away and they're freshly deceased and so there's not putrefaction and fluids and so on. So your corpses were one day, two days, and four days. Four, four days, that kind of, so very recent. Um, so that's called residual odor, and it's appearing in court now uh, much, much more commonly, and there's no science. So we're not questioning whether cadaver dogs can find cadaver material that we don't have. We're, that's not what we're studying. What we're studying is this residual odor. But two states um, allow, did allow that in the courtroom, even though there's no science. Oh, yes, ab understand. absolutely. So I personally have appeared in court, uh, both in, in Colorado and in California, uh, uh, testifying to the validity of this residual odor and and the, the real question was we had no science we had expert opinions but we had no science about it and uh, a lot of the cadaver dog handlers not all of them but quite a number of them are purporting that their dog can do this and uh, the National Institute of Justice funded us to do this initial study that's one of hopefully many uh, to, to uh, really ask the fundamental basic question of can the dogs identify residual odor relatively soon after the residual odor is created uh, and uh, the accuracy was 13 percent. And so that was 30 um, positive, correct positives were found in 105 trials? Yes. And now, um, so, so if you would have to give an expert witness statement today, would, would, you, would you trust the residual odor? No, cadaver no, and now I can quite clearly say with a you know, well, soon scientific paper or report here at this conference, the science to say, no, they cannot do that. That is, that is, that, that is not, not good, solidly. I, it's not just my opinion as an expert on what I think dogs can and can do and the science of the odors and so on, but we have now tested it definitively and they cannot do it. That the dogs cannot do, but on the side you found 10 substances that are probably good candidates that are very typical for freshly deceased people. Did that surprise you? No, not at all, not at all. And what the, we really wanted to do the chemistry because what we wanted to be able to do is to eventually be able to follow up with a question about whether, you know, to what degree they could do this and for how long could they do this, and we needed to know something about the biology of those odors. I like that. Or the chemistry <laughs> of those odors. But also, if they can't do it, which is what we discovered now, there's a question certainly that comes up, could they be trained to do it? Do you think there may have been false convictions related to this the alleged scent of you know, residual I'll, odor? I'll say I'm not an attorney, and so there are probably people who might have a better opinion than me, but in my experience, in the cases that I was involved in, absolutely, I think there were false convictions. Because there were false positives, false negatives, yeah. and also, or maybe the last thing, the edge effect. What was that about? Yeah, the edge effect is, is probably an artifact of, of, the, of the spacing in the room. We think it was probably a study artifact, and we're going to talk more about it in the rest of our presentation, but um, we think it's just that the, the dogs are make, having been forced to make a tight turn during our assessment because of the size of the room that we had them in, and the dogs are perceiving that maneuver, that request to turn from their handlers as, no, there's something there, you should be identifying it. And, and so some false communication between the handler and the dog. So that's something we're going to continue. We did investigate in our study and we'll be continuing to investigate. Oh, final thing, just something emotional. When you reported to the teams that yeah. some of them had no true correct positives, yeah. were they like disappointed, it's, sad or something? Um, not, not really. Um, there, there's certainly a, a, a group, a, a significant group of these handlers who feel that their dogs can do it. Uh, and there is, you know, some pushback on that. Um, there are quite, there's quite a number of the handlers who don't believe their dogs can do it. And so there were, you know, a lot of heads nodded and said, we didn't think they could do it, and now you've proven it. We've never said that our dogs could do it. So not all handlers, you know, are saying this. 
but there are clearly are a set that are saying that our dogs can identify this residual odor and um, but, need to be convinced. But after that study, do you think that man trailing is possible like after one month or something? Because I hear that sometimes that a dog may find the odor of a living person like one month after a person walked through a forest or... I think it's, you know, I think it certainly is possible. Um, we do have some research on that. that that's some part of my broader background as a, as a canine behaviorist and, and a certified applied animal behaviorist. That there is literature on the man tracking, on the live scenting. Um, it decays rapidly, um, but there's probably scent, depends on the weather conditions and the dog and everything else. But I think tracking up to possibly as long as 30 days is certainly, is certainly possible. That's going to be another study. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely.